Okay, so uh, good afternoon everybody. Now I want to tell you a little bit about uh, some of our results in the field of water study and uh, different topics related to this subject. First of all, we, now we know, and it was shown in this conference by many presenters, that water is informational media. So water can accept any type of information from any influence, and you see it's only just some examples of this on this slide, and keep this information. So we can tell about changing of water structure under the influence, different influence. We can tell about memory of water, and by memory of water we can uh, define possibility of keeping this structure for some time. And we can tell about information transfer through water. So it's all now part of new paradigm that we all together, presenting in this hall and many other people, are introducing in the modern science. And of course, we need different technologies to prove it, to demonstrate it, and to work with it. So I will tell you about one technology. The name of this technology is Gas Discharge Visualization, or GDV. And it's a part of bioelectrography uh, or electrophotonics. And we are developing this technology based on long history. So first uh, result was got uh, by uh, George Lichtenberg in uh, 1777. So he found that if he placed some subject in electromagnetic field, he can see light around subject. Then in 19th, 20th century, it was a lot of researchers who dedicated their life to study of this phenomenon. And in particular, it is known in the family Kirlian. In the mid 20th century, they developed so named Kirlian photography and were able to produce a lot of very interesting results that attracted a lot of attention. And then it was Kendall Johnson, Delma Moss in the United States, who developed this as a very interesting line. But still, up to the end of 20th century, it wasn't a scientific line. Because in science we need, first of all, reproducibility, we, not, we need repeatability, and we need quantitative data, we need numbers. Without numbers we have no modern science. So in 1995 our team was able to develop new uh, camera, new approach, and it's based on uh, digital processing of information. And we can take information from any subject, because any subject in a strong electromagnetic field can emit photons. So in particular with water, we have a special installation, uh, and as was shown yesterday by Beverly, we suspend water drop above the electrode. On the electrode we apply some uh, uh, electrical impulses, and they are very specially selected, very stable so the electrical impulses. Then, uh, by these impulses, we select, we create electromagnetic field. This field stimulates electrophoton emissions, so photon and electron emission from the subject. And uh, then we process this light to CCD camera, specially selected and operating uh, in the band of uh, about 280, uh, 600 nanometers. And then we get some information to the computer. So, uh, we tell about uh, quantum electromagnetic process because we excite uh, electrons to, and then they emit photons. And those photons uh, are related, of course, to conductivity of the subject, they are related, of course, to physical properties of the subject, to the surface uh, structure of the subject. So, it's many, many parameters. So in uh, this uh, found, uh, this approach found a lot of applications now in the last uh, 17 years. First of all, this medicine. In medicine, we are using this uh, for analysis of human energy field. And this analysis, I never tell about diagnosis, because diagnosis is the way our doctor can evaluate different analysis. So with this analysis, we can define existing problems in functional state of the body, and we can define potential problems. Because all these problems are reflected in energy field on very early stages. Then a very interesting line of this consciousness study, the influence of our intention, of our brain, of our consciousness, of our mind to environment and in particular to 
different sensors, and we are talking with flying very intensely, very interesting. In sport, I am a deputy director of the National Institute of Sport in Russia, because this technology officially accepted as one of the key technologies for Olympic and Paralympic uh, uh, team strength uh, testing. And we use it intensively and it's published a, a lot of papers. <coughs> now, finally, we can publish it in English because what we are forbidden to review this information. Now, we have at least one paper published in the journals of medicine. Then, of course, water and material testing was a very important line and a very interesting line. And I will concentrate just on this line now in psychology as well. And uh, latest uh, measuring energy of space. Uh, defining different uh, zones, uh, geoactive zones, pathogenic zones, uh, positive, negative for health. You've seen yesterday in the movie uh, some moments of our expeditions. And the influence of collective uh, consciousness process to the space. Again, I will show you just a little bit. So we have many patents, more than 200 scientific papers published. Um, um, more 10 or 11 books in six languages, and you find you can find a lot of uh, information on Amazon.com. Now I am publishing practically my books on Amazon.com because it's print on demand. You just see my book, you click, you order, you pay, and you have it in a week. That's very easy. So you can find uh, a lot of books over there, and as I told, they some of them they are uh, translated to all languages. We have developed special testing kits to test different <coughs> subjects. Uh, it is for a special kit for water, especially for uh, different uh, liquids, because, uh, for example, for blood, we need different technology compared with water, uh, leaves, very interesting seeds, crystals. So, all these subjects may be studied in this technology, and all of them give very, very interesting information. For example, we have a line where we can see the uh, potential uh, germination, potential of the seeds uh, when they are kept in the right uh, condition. Or we can see the uh, potential uh, power of uh, plant to produce something useful like grapes, for example. Or we can see the difference between, for example, uh, apples grown up on sunny side of the hill, shadow side of the hill, with uh, organic uh, fertilizer, with natural fertilizer, and so on. So it's very interesting, uh, sensitive technology. And of course, we have for water, we have very special syringes uh, that allow us to get repeatable data and reproducible data. And this is active information. Please look at this picture. You see, it is water, but now you see, it is very active water. All this Parks, they demonstrate that this water is very active and it is always dynamic information. So we are using only dynamical deaths of water, and the images may be very strange, very interesting looking. And of course, there are dependence on conductivity. It is uh, clear, but we work in this area where we are not dependent because we are interested in high dilutions. It's absolutely clear that we have many technologies to study um, very conductive liquids, but it's not very interesting. Uh, maybe only blood. And of course, uh, we have very clear dependence on uh, concentration. So again, we see these uh, concentrations, and we can see uh, up to very low concentrations below our garden number. Then, and of course, uh, we see transformation of particular liquid in particular water under the influence of the environment. And this experiment is time dynamics, so it's time. And then we take a uh, uh, sample and we, with suspended drop, we see dynamic of the sample. Please look, have a look. Those two lines, this is in the beginning, just when we open some portal. And we can walk both with distant water, with mineral water, with natural waters. I prefer to work with natural waters, and we had a lot of discussions of this, that uh, natural waters, mineral water, they are much more sensitive to any information compared with distant water. Of course, I understand that for scientific clearness, we have to need to have a distant water, but still, if you open this bottle of distant water, you will see something like this. And this, please pay attention, this is very high variation of signal, uh, in time and from sample to sample, so we typically take uh, from 5 to uh, 10 
get samples, and then they will coverage as well, so it's variation between samples. And then, after several hours, four hours, we have quite a stable signal. And different samples are absolutely the same signal. So, it means that, of course, when we work with water, we need to keep it in mind. Water always interacts with the environment, depending on what people you have in the room. Water will have different signals and different information. So, when we uh, make a precise experiment, we try not to have people in the room at all. Because they can really strongly influence and we understand why. And not only have chemical. Then, uh, of course, we can study different liquids. Uh, very interesting line to study uh, high dilutions. Uh, this work was done by our colleagues in Arizona University in the uh, United States. And they've been, they, it was very precise, uh, wind blind uh, study of homeopathic solutions, different solutions. And they found a really clear difference. It was initial water and it was different homeopathic solutions of different types. So, uh, difference not only in the uh, amplitude of signal, but in the dynamics of signal. So, from this signal, it is clear that homeopathic solution active substance that interacts with the environment. So, signal, as you see, always change with time. When we open this solution and test this experiment, so it's, it's main difference between active waters, active solutions, and uh, just stable. Then, you know, maybe bath flower essences, it is uh, lying in uh, similar to homeopathy. And there it was very interesting to see, of course, different so it is the initial substance where they take as dilution and then different signals. And we get many uh, information, this uh, data they are published, but, for, but of course the cosmetic industry they uh, prefer not to pay attention to this results. And then of course and of course we can see difference in natural stuff as well. This is uh results of uh, rose oil from uh, uh, Morocco, Bulgaria and Russia. You see that uh, Russian rose oil has absolutely different dynamics of signal compared with uh, Morocco and Bulgaria. Products. So, I don't know, maybe it's because of <laughs> Russia. It's very cold, maybe because of influence. But it was before Putin time, so it was <laughs> no influence of Putin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not, but maybe it's that. So, and then, uh, very interesting, of course, to see effect of different substances to water. And we've done many experiments, so, uh, for example, crystals, gemstones, because it's a lot of discussion that they're uh, influencing. So, we really demonstrated that water has a really a strong effect, effect uh, to, so this initial sample of water, and you pay attention to it, it was taken event water. So, uh, natural water. So with this water, we have some effects, but much, much, uh, very low. For natural waters, depending on the water, we was able to find very clear effects. So first stage of any experiment was water, was to select appropriate water for the particular experiment. So you see this initial sample, then sample of even water uh, kept, uh, when they kept it for 15 minutes, and then it is for a couple of hours. So, and of course, this uh, gemstone was clean, so it was no residuals, uh, and so, so it was clear effect of some form. Uh, the next experiment, another experiment, so control, and then after one hour, after five hours. So, again, this clear effect. Same effects we were able to see when we just put crystal nearby the water. But of course it's much much lower, but it was possible to see effect as well. So I always tell that if you have uh, good water, it is very good to keep the best of course to keep big diamonds in water. Then it's very comfortable. <laughs> uh, so it's not experiment of this kind. Then uh, there are influence of different devices to water. Because uh, now there are even in this context, and in posters we see uh, that people are developing different devices and they try to influence water. We understand that water always will be responsive to any uh, influence. Would it be electromagnetic?
electromagnetic, magnetic, if it's properly done in particular conditions, then you can see this effect. But of course, we need to find out the metrology of this effect. We need to understand how long this effect will last in water, what the conditions are, or how it will be efficient or not. So for this, we develop another uh, approach. Uh, it's based on ideas for also we have a vial of water. Then we in insert uh, some standard uh, measuring electrode. And this electrode is connected to this device. So this is our device. And uh, this device it has a titanium cylinder standing on the optical electrode. Why titanium? Because titanium does not deteriorate in, uh, in time in uh, electrical field. So it, it may be kept for thousands of years. Of course, we can use uh, the tanks realm or neobium, but titanium, we have a lot of submarines in Russia from titanium. So it's, it's very easy for us to get a piece of titanium. No <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and then we have this signal from this titanium cylinder, and we process this signal to computer, and then we have all processing uh, in server now. So all the software kept on server, so you connect to server and you can process all this information and get results. So uh, this is specially designed to make it simple for uh, research, simple for use, because people need to know, don't need to know how to process, how to make statistics. You have all results and all statistical analysis. So, and this way we study uh, signal that depends on uh, um, I would say, uh, capacitance of uh, this uh, subject. Because uh, from electrical point of view, from technical point of view, we close the circuit by capacitance of this system. And if we change the property of water, it doesn't matter which property. At the moment, at the, in this uh, technology, I don't know which property we change. I don't know whether it is clusters, whether it is coherent domains, whether it is some currents in water, uh, but we know that it changes. Uh, then, uh, we, if, we, if we change, then we can see a transformation of signal. And uh, typically, we make this experiment like this, for example, this one of the devices from Israel, from our uh, colleagues, and then uh, we see this how it's organized. So we apply electrodes to water uh, jar, and then at some moments, first of course we take signal, background signal, and then at some moment uh, we have this, uh, we don't want this uh, device. So you see this background signal in time, and this after one of the devices, narrow slings, they are applied to water, and you see very clear statistical <coughs> No doubt, the statistical difference. Then we can process this signal in, in uh, our software, and uh, again we have background signal, and this every column it uh, relates to 10 mi minutes interval. So for 40 minutes we are in background, just in case, and then uh, for 40 minutes we are in signal. And of course we can change the regime, we can play this signal because uh, this influence comes only through the electrodes. So uh, no physical, uh, I would say not physical, uh, not uh, changing the water by any other means. And this way, of course, we can make a lot of different experiments. Uh, so uh, we, some materials are published in the Journal of Life Physics, in the Water Journal as well. Now we're preparing the next paper for Water Journal, I hope. Short time, Jerry will accept it, maybe, with some transformations. And, but very interesting at the uh, moment, it is a consciousness influence to water. Because what we are discussing, what this Professor Monty is presenting us, this is all transformation of information through different media. Uh, we believe that our consciousness, our intention, it is again strong media that due to uh, quantum effects may transform our surrounding world. And we try to prove it. So we have people or groups of people who are sitting in some place and then they try to send their intention to sensors. 
water of different senses. For example, this is a uh, very famous uh, German healer, Christus Grossinatis. And you, first of all, we see a transformation of images as images, and it's clear in most cases. But of course, first is more sensitive to see numbers. So, this is initial signal of water, and it has some, uh, some properties, but it's quite stable. It has, of course, some ratio, but quite stable. And then it's same water, but with in intention. And you see, it's absolutely clear, absolutely clear statistical difference. So, it's absolutely clear. And in, uh, it's interesting that uh, in this case, it is positive. Sent to water, but say we can see negative influence, so it has opposite effect. It can increase signal of water or decrease signal of water. Of course, we don't know which what is going on in the mind of a person, but that's why uh, I always felt that please send positive emotions always, because you can really influence water. And what does mean water? We are water. We are seventy percent of water at least. So when we send positive emotions, we absolutely clear influence each other even without involvement of consciousness, of perception. Then uh, another uh, example of uh, same experiment, so the initial signal was here, and then was some intentions. And uh, of course we are doing very interesting experiments of this kind. For example, we have five bottles standing on the table in the laboratory. Uh, labeled uh, with uh, different uh, labels, and then we ask a person to send intention to particular uh, color bottles. And it, it, we have some time, for example, two hours, when a person from Japan can send his intention to our laboratory. And especially select a time that uh, <coughs> no one in the laboratory. And then after this, we can make analysis of all five bottles. So uh, from Ten experiments that we have done, six was successful, so it was correlation between intention and result. In two, it was uh, different, so it was intention to send, for example, to green bottle, but uh, in our measurement was red bottle. And in two, it was no effect at all. So this is a typical signal of uh, untouched water, I would say, and this is signal of water under the influence, and please pay attention. This green line, it is indication of water disturbed from the very beginning. So you see. But this red line, it is water disturbed after some time. So, of course, it is only some, I would say, uh, imagination, but I would expect that this water was really influenced and this water accepts information from uh, another water. So, quite possible. Then we had a series of experiments with Lynn McTaggart when she was organizing people by internet and people collectively was sending information to uh, us. And um, of course it is interesting to see uh, whether this uh, really changeable water or changed water can influence condition of people. And this is another story. Uh, so uh, this is again statistical analysis of different situations. Uh, so, we are measuring uh, environmental energy and we have a special sensor, it is connected to this device. Again, it uh, collects information through internet, it processes information through internet. And we are measuring the change of environmental energy under the influence of different situations, like physical situations, physical presence of people, like emotional situations, uh, for example, big group of people, people uh, listening to lecture, for example, we use it for students and uh, we uh, detect their response to lectures. And it's absolutely a different response to different lectures. Uh, we use it in the political situations, in church during uh, sessions. And in particular, uh, so we, we have this uh, sensor and uh, in our friends in the United States they name it Sputnik, because you know it's Russian Sputnik, in the 60s, 61. Uh, so, again, uh, my, for example, uh, favorite line, it is measuring uh, response and over performances. Uh, in, so, we did a series of experiments in the 
provinces. In particular, uh, we had very beautiful performance of René Fleming and Mithy Kostovsky. And they came to St. Petersburg and we were invited to be part of the group, I would say. And we've been measuring during the performance. And it was absolutely an effect of their moment of their sleep. Absolutely effect. So uh, we made of course, statistical analysis of the so it was statistically clear effect of the moment of their singing would it be separate or together compared with uh, the ground. <coughs> so it's very, very interesting line. And in this line, I'm sure that influence comes from air and what means air and water. So we have this concept that it comes through the influence to the vapor in the water. And of course, uh, we are doing uh, clinical studies as well. And clinical studies will work both in the medical environment and in the sport environment. I prefer always working with athletes because, first of all, they don't understand what's going on. <laughs> they are they are not in sport. They don't need to think. And second, uh, we have a big group of people who are having practically the same state. Because we work in the school of Olympic Reserve where uh, there are people who are candidates for our Olympic teams training and they are, have same conditions of life, same type of food, same water, same uh, training style, uh, so they are very stable situation. So we uh, take a group of people, in particular experiment, I show you one experiment, so it was 20 athletes um, from the School of Olympic Reserve and uh, they were measured, of course, initially and then for 30 days they were drinking special water uh, processed with graphene filter. You understand? The graphene filter it allows to uh, make uh, clear water, clean water, because uh, we don't know what's going on in bottles in Russia and uh, to have it some specific properties, I would say. So in other control rooms they would drink normal water, not that but uh, from ordinary filters. And we are measuring usually a set of parameters. So it's obligatory like HRV, high variability. It is a very sensitive parameter and allows to give information about uh, sympathetic, parasympathetic uh, nervous system activity. But then of course blood pressure, pulse rate, uh, oxygen uptake, energy profile, the GGV. And in some cases, we are measuring blood parameters, uh, clinical and biochemical parameters, and immune status in particular. And uh, we make uh, this study, uh, we give them physical loading, depending on the patients. For example, for athletes, we give uh, physical loading on this machine with uh, pulse 160 for 3 minutes. So it's quite strong loading. For uh, people, uh, we uh, give very simple exercises like step test or just moving test uh, but, or breathing test uh, but it's obligatory to give some loading because what's the most interesting we need to see response to the load different load and then we are testing them uh, and a month later, uh, later and of course it's control group and it's, uh, experimental group and you see it was absolutely clear difference statistically clear difference so it was an uh, uh, experimental group and control group. This is an uh, experimental group, before and after. So it is different parameters and you see it was clear statistical difference, significant difference. And it's important that we were able with GDV technology to see the influence on different uh, organs and systems. And again, it was blue lines. This is the experimental group. And we see increase of most parameters after this uh, 30 days of drinking water. And uh, dark lines, those are uh, control. And we have decrease because it was in springtime. And you know, in springtime, it is uh, typically in our northern part of the world, it's decrease of all parameters for uh, people. So it is clear effect of good water. And to my mind, then it is a profile of most states, 
again it was clear difference between two groups. So it is clear that uh, if you drink good water and especially processed water, then of course you have may have good results. But it should be demonstrated. Uh, we don't uh, need to accept uh, as granted. So we need clinical studies in every state. And we have a lot of uh, data of this kind presented in our congresses. So together with Vladimir Vareyev, we have congress every year for 17 years now. And uh, we have always in July uh, in St. Petersburg because it's a time of quiet nights. It is beautiful. At night you can read books, you can walk around the city, it's absolutely safe, it's beautiful. We have all bridges open and the only danger can be on one side of the river and your hotel will be on the other side of the river. That's but we have many restaurants and cafe open 24 hours per day, so it's no problem. And uh, so we invite you, everybody, to this conference as well. And uh, I hope that if we drink good water, we can be healthy, strong, up to very long time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, to continue, and I think that we have time for a couple of questions. Thank you for your talk, it was very interesting. Um, the signals that you showed from water, especially water that had uh, conscious intent directed at it, did you look at any autocorrelations within the signal itself? Uh, you mean signal that we collect from water? Within the signal of the water. Yes, use. absolutely. Uh, yes, so we always make several measurements. So we are measuring gauge, we are measuring uh, conductivity of water. But in most cases, uh, this, mm, I would say, uh, macroscopic parameters, they don't change under the influence of consciousness. In some cases, of course, we can see the change of age. But it is really... Uh, should be very strong influence. You know that, for example, uh, Bill Tizer, he is doing experiments with uh, influencing pH of water, and they have very dramatic effects, but uh, it needs a lot of questions to this. Because I, see, I believe that microscopic parameters, they are very stable for water. No, because we are measuring fractality of the signal, we are measuring many parameters of the signal, so we really can see the patterns, absolutely. So same as, you know, maybe she knows, uh, Professor Schnorr, he's doing very similar uh, I think that we have no time, but Constantine uh, said that you can address the Amazon.com and you get all the answers there. Uh, you can come to me as well. <laughs> I'm here. Okay, okay I would like to introduce...